Are you wondering how vitamin B1 works in your body? Maybe you're taking some B complexes or just looking at your multivitamin. Not sure how all these different vitamins work in our body and whether or not you need it. My name is Dr. Tanella, and in this video, we're going to look at that specifically. How does vitamin B1 work in your body? We'll look at what it does, what a deficiency might look like, what is the RDA for vitamin B1, how a deficiency might present itself. So again, as I said, my name is Dr. Taranella. And if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I make these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test symptom or just understanding how different vitamins, nutrients work in your body. I make these videos to help you get a better understanding of your health. So if you like this kind of information, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaim, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, well, let's check out how vitamin B1 works in your body. So vitamin B1, also known as thiamine, is an essential water-soluble vitamin that plays important roles mostly in metabolic processes in the body. Its role in these metabolic processes is through serving as a coenzyme for specific enzymatic reactions in the metabolic processes. So what is a cofactor? A cofactor is basically a helper to an enzyme. Enzymes facilitate reactions. They take one substrate and turn it into a product. And in order for that to move forward smoothly, that enzyme needs a helper or a cofactor. And in this case, we're talking about thiamine or vitamin B1 as a cofactor. The active form of thiamine or vitamin B1 is referred to as thiamine pyrophosphate or TPP for short. And again, this is the active form that's used for that coenzyme function. The overall metabolic process that the thiamine or TPP is supporting as a cofactor is the decarboxylation of alpha keto acids. And this is used again in metabolism and energy production for breaking down carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. So it's critical for things like glycolysis, breaking down glucose, Krebs cycle, and citric acid, and metabolism of branch amino acids and fatty acids. So there's specific enzymes that are being targeted in these specific areas of glycolysis, Krebs cycle, fatty acid, and amino acid breakdown. So let's look at those enzymes specifically, and then we'll go into more about how thiamine actually works in the body. So the first enzyme, and I think this is probably the more critical one or the one that most comes up clinically speaking, is pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So thiamine pyrophosphate or TPP is a cofactor for this enzyme complex, which catalyzes a conversion of pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. When you don't have enough of the thiamine, what ends up happening is you get less of the acetyl-CoA and so less of your carbohydrate metabolism is going to go into making energy. Instead, it can get shuttled across into lactate. And lactate also can be helpful and has useful purposes in the body, but it doesn't yield nearly as much energy as pyruvate and the corresponding acetyl-CoA that comes from the pyruvate. Alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, similar to pyruvate dehydrogenase, is basically it's working as a cofactor, turning that alpha-ketoglutarate into succinyl-CoA. It is also used in, a, in the TPP form in a pathway known as the pentose phosphate shunt. And this is one of the ways that the body can generate precursors to nucleic acids for DNA support. And then finally, you have branched-chain amino acids being broken down through the enzyme branched-chain amino acid dehydrogenase. And this is also a complex that thiamine serves as a cofactor for. So these various enzymes are allowing our bodies to generate energy in the most efficient way possible. But without that thiamine, you're basically going to start decreasing some of the activity of those enzymes and that energy is going to get shuttled into less efficient ways of producing energy. You can think of it like when you're working out and you're at that peak aerobic threshold and your body starts producing lactic acid 
It's the same kind of thing here, but instead of not having enough oxygen, instead it's just not enough thiamine and your body starts shuttling some of that pyruvate and glucose into lactate. Now, initially thiamine deficiency is not going to show up in all the tissues at the same time because your body will conserve some of that thiamine for certain areas of the body. All of our bodies need energy in every single cell all the time, but some areas of the body are more susceptible to decreasing levels of energy. And that's where you may see some of the symptoms show up first of thiamine deficiency. Think of like brain neurocognitive effects, nervous system, digestive tract, and cardiovascular. These are all particularly susceptible to lower levels of ATP or lower levels of acetyl-CoA coming from pyruvate and other sources. The RDA for thiamine is only one to two milligrams per day, which is not that much. A half a cup of rice, for instance, might have about two milligrams. A half a cup of black beans might have 0.4 milligrams. Breakfast cereals are generally fortified with B vitamins and can have as much as 1.2 milligrams per serving. Now, those aren't necessarily good for us, but get an idea of how much thiamine you're getting from everyday foods. It's mostly going to be abundant in whole grains, legumes, seeds, and nuts. It's also in eggs, and there is some in meats and even organ meats. On the note of the RDA, I mean, RDA is the recommended daily allowance, just basically giving you the minimum amount of thiamine. So even if you're getting one or two milligrams, some people need a lot more depending on these other dietary factors that could be limiting the amount of thiamine that's coming in, maybe medications or other physiological stressors on the body that are requiring more thiamine. Absorption is not typically a problem for most people as long as they're not taking any medications that could potentially interfere with absorption. So thiamine deficiency is actually not that common, but there are some reasons if you're following a very specific type of diet and also you overlay that with some specific genetic tendencies, you may actually get some problems with low thiamine, inadequate thiamine over time. For example, someone that eats raw fish, selfish every day, well, that's going to contain thiaminases. And these are enzymes that actually break down thiamine. Tannins are compounds that are found in teas. And if you're drinking a lot of those every day, that can also lead to some issues where you're not absorbing your thiamine or not as much thiamine from that, especially if it's really close to when you're consuming that food. So again, really specific diets that are eliminating the high thiamine foods and or consumption of sushi on a regular consistent basis, and maybe even chronic black tea drinkers or teas with tannins may present someone with more difficulties or problems with thiamine deficiency. And there's some other things that we'll talk about in the coming videos too that make someone more susceptible to thiamine deficiency. But overall, this is how thiamine works in our bodies, works by enhancing or helping metabolic processes move forward so we can generate the most energy at any given time when our bodies demand it. So the next thing we want to look at is what are the early signs and symptoms that can tip someone off or tell someone that they might be developing a thiamine deficiency. That's what we're going to look at in the next video. Okay, how do I do? Did that help you better understand how vitamin B1 works in your body? Hopefully it does. If you do have follow-up questions on this topic, drop it in the comment section. As I said, I will be doing a few more videos on this topic. It is something that I use in my practice on very select patient population. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.